thereafter. Cold night, we've seen that the sleet and snow has been falling. Robert Hicks is the big match referee. They're just clearing the flags away from the surface. It's looks in good nick. I know the Sail Sharks play here as well in uh, the other code. But it's uh, firm, it's quick. And I think that's what we'll get. I think we'll get a quick match. Eddie, you'll see Salford, they'll, they'll back themselves. They'll throw this ball around. At one point in this game, this evening, they're going to have about four or five pivots on the side. But what they do, they complete very high. Against Wigan, they were 80% with the ball. 78 against Witness, and 88% the completion. The completion it was when they played and took apart Saints. So look for them to play a good brand of rugby, but they will respect possession, and they'll need to do that against this good Warrington side. Big night coming up for number 14 for the Salford Red Devils, Gareth O'Brien. He will get the game underway. Here we go. Go high, hanging kickoff, and underneath that, ex Salford man Stefan Ratchford. His first touch of 2016, he passes the ball inside to big Ashton Sims, who takes the first tackle of the match. Brad Dwyer at dummy half. There's Sando helping it wide to Ben Curry, and Curry having a dash and taking on Robert Louis and Louis getting him down on the on the tackle. Well, this is where they want to play the game. They want to keep Warrington trapped as near to their line as they can. As I say, not the biggest, but they've got to watch for Warrington's strike here. And here goes Kevin Penny down the wing. Now he's quick as Penny. And that's very good defending. He stood his ground there. Did Gareth O'Brien knows all about Kevin Penny. Of course, Sandow with a long crossfield kick looking for line and plucked out of the air, though, brilliantly. Wonderful take by Greg Johnson. It's a pretty impressive first set of possession for Warrington. I guess they'd be delighted Richard Ergo and Troy Smith. They've identified that Salford really compressed the defence in at the kickoff. Justin Carney was 20 metres from the far touchline. Hence the reason why the one shifted it to that side and eventually got the break down the left flank. They couldn't eventually turn it into points, but they'd be delighted the fact that they've managed to get around their opponents to start. One of the great features of our coverage this year, as this ball comes out in the first penalty, the match goes Salford's way. We can see the ball strip from the hooker, Brad Dwyer, who's in place of Daryl Clark. Gets his place starting this game. Quality player, Brad Dwyer. I say one of the features of our coverage is the fact that the players join John Wells at the touchscreen immediately after the match. And Michael Dobson has accepted our invitation tonight. And uh, Dobson will be with John Wells uh, immediately after the full-time siren. And I wonder whether he'll be talking about another Salford victory. He hopes so as uh, Craig Kopchak takes the ball forward for the Red Devils. That's the second tackle, and here is another penalty because Warrington holding the man down. Chris well, Hill, the guilty party here. Well, Salford, a couple of back-to-back -back penalties. Turn up the pressure there, and with the likes of Robert Louis, he's an out-and-out -out runner when he gets the ball. He made more metres than any of his teammates last week when they played against Wigan. 157, carried the ball 20 times. So you don't know what you're going to get from him. Michael Dobson, well, he pulls all the strings. And here now is Junior Sal, he breaks the first tackle, and he gets the first try! On the back of two penalties, Junior Sal gets Salford running at the start of this match. It's deja vu, last time we were here, they got off to a blistering start against St Helens and they've started exactly the same. Junior Sow's fourth touchdown of the season. What a start for Salford again. Well, Eddie, I talked about the right edge, I talked about the strength that they've got and the penalties here. A couple of back-to-back -back penalties, like you were saying, Eddie, it gives that field position up and then you don't expect a centre to go running through, bust a couple of tackles and score the opening try. You want teams to go around you on the edge. Here goes the penalty. And this, although it's a big effort, it's a big run, but that's soft defence from Warrington. Joe Westerman goes into the tackle. He falls off it, along with Chris Hill, the England international. And Matty Russell can't prevent Junior Sal, the former New Zealand international. This is a great start for Salford. Yes, it is. He played for Samoa in the World Cup 2013, did the Junior South nine times for the Kiwis. And so Michael Dobson, 200-plus appearances in the British or Super League game, over 1,600 points. It's Catalan, Wigan, Hull KR, Salford now. And his left boot ensures that uh, Salford Red Devils have the perfect start for Tim Sheens and Ian Watson. 6-0. Well, alarm bells must be ringing here for Warrington. 
because I hate it when people talk about schoolboy errors, but that's worse than schoolboy defence. If children were trying to stop Genius there, I think they might have done a better effort. And that must be a massive concern to Warrington, whose defence this season was brilliant. Remember back in round one, they went to Leeds and defended their own trial line almost for 30, 40 minutes. They spent that long on it. But that is amazing that they would miss the tackles and let so score so simply. Well, that's better defence, but it's up the other end of the field for Warrington Wolves at the moment. And Salford will certainly have a spring in their step after that beginning. And here is another penalty. Well, Robert Hicks is caning Chris Hill and company so far tonight. Eddie, I think it's been a real feature of Super League. Referees trying to speed the play of the ball. If you show enough effort and energy to play that ball, as Justin Carney did and Salford on that occasion, you're going to get a penalty. You're going to get 20, 30 easy metres and more possession. So they start from the halfway line with the try scorer Junior Sow on the back of that penalty. We've only had uh, five minutes on the watch and uh, Richard Agar and Tony Smith must be slightly concerned already at the number of penalties that uh, Warrington have conceded. That's uh, the third. And here is Dobson. He turns the ball back on the inside and uh, Flanagan is brought to ground by a good tackle by Brad Dwyer. Here is Dobson. Gets the pass away again and that's a good work from Josh Jones but good defence from Warrington for all of that and a dab down the line looking for Johnson oh that's just bitten him for pace and they're an attack inside they'll attack from anywhere at Salford clever little kick again just taking control Gareth O'Brien steps up from the full back roll just drops it onto his boot Nicely weighted kick here for the winger Johnson. That's the advantage of having a fullback who used to play as a halfback and made frequent kicks of the ball. Gareth O'Brien's another option to Michael Dobson. Stood on the side and they'd be disappointed the kick went over the side. There was a great chance there for a second try. Well, a chance here maybe for Warrington to settle down a little bit because it strikes me in the opening six minutes they've hardly they've hardly had the ball in their hands really. They've been on the back of three straight penalties to Salford. And of course they've conceded the first try. So what have they got here with Tom Lynham? Well, Makes a few metres progress. Sorry, I did. They'll want to get to the kick. They'll want to make sure that they buy a bit of land by getting some distance on it. Some of the outside backs now just trying to bring that ball forward. Matty Russell, big powerful fullback that he is. Well, there's the penalty now. Well, he's brought his whistle with him, Robert Hicks. He does talk to the players and he's been saying to the players, you've got to release them. You know, wouldn't you be critical of Salford there, Barry? Three men around Matthew Russell, who I know he's strong, but they should have been able to control him better there. Absolutely, it's the third man that goes in, doesn't complete his task. Matthew Russell keeps his feet, and at that point, that's the, the signal from the referee to get out of the tackle. Matthew Russell falls to the floor, and the referee blows his whistle. So the first opportunity for Warrington really to attack in this first half, and that's the first drive from Jack Hughes. Hughes will get to his feet, play it to Dwyer, Ashton Sims will take the ball forward for the Warrington Wolves, good solid work up the middle by Sims, Dwyer the dummy half, he finds Stefan Ratchford, Ratchford gives it then to Sandow, Sandow finds Russell who has chimed into the line again, comes away from two would be tacklers, comes away from three, gets the ball away to Ratchford, Ratchford great offload as he fell, finds Russell again, and Russell spins away from yet another tackle. This is alarming for Salford, they can't put Matty Russell down, they do eventually. Is he jack in the box? He's so strong, Ratty Russell. Sandow, aiming to go right, comes, aiming to go left rather, comes right, finds Stefan Ratchford. Ratchford gets the ball away, and here's a chance for Jack Hughes! And Hughes... What's happened here, the referee Robert Hicks is having a very close look. I think this he is thinks a he has scored. Well, so does he as well. Big strength. Jack yeah. Hughes keeps his legs pumping. He gets over the line. I think this is a try, this. Well, referee Robin Hicks agrees on the field. He saw the ball on the ground, maybe. Stuart Cummings first. Hearing from you tonight. Well, he must be fairly confident to send it up as a try. He didn't look like he was going to give it a, a first look, but he's in a good position. That ball certainly looks like it's uh, down towards the line. And certainly from that view, you can't say that he's, he's got that wrong. So... It looks like this ball has been grounded. That's a super zoom in there. Does it get on the ground? I don't think it gets down that, Stuart. I'm going to change my mind. I don't, I don't think there's a hand underneath it. I don't think he gets this down. I think there's a bit more to play out yet. The, the tackle's still in motion. We've got to wait until that goes all the way to the ground here. 
as Josh Griffin got his hand underneath that ball and said he present, prevented the try. And then I'll go to another one, H2. Is he pushed back as he's trying to ground the ball so he doesn't even get the ball down and he's pushed back into the field of play? Well, the tackle was still in motion, so if he was, that, that, that would be fine. It's all about whether he's got the ball down on the ground. I haven't seen anything that can disprove Robert Hicks's uh, view of it at the moment. You won't get a better view than this. Is there enough there for the video referee to say that he definitely has, hasn't got the ball on the ground? Because there's a lot goes on with bodies on top of it. Well, it's amazing. Even with a video ref, we saw this at Hulk last week. You still don't know. You could watch that a hundred times. And you're, it's still best of one man's opinion. One man's opinion, but it goes against also what the referee's seen on the field. You know, it's difficult to see either way whether that ball's down or not. We're going purely off it's a Robert Hicks's view. It's a difficult course, but I don't think he gets this ball down. Well, here comes the decision from video referee Richard Silverwood. What does he make of it? He's given the try. And frankly, he's left with no option because of this system that they've got going at the moment where the on-field referee makes a call and then wants it confirmed upstairs. And you have to find conclusive proof to turn that decision upside down. Yeah, it is. It's a tough call, isn't it? Matty Russell, yet again, he's, he's been causing problems for Salford and Chris Sand now. Well, he's just looking for someone to, to punch a hole. They're very exciting. They like to keep the ball alive and just the strength from Jack Hughes to keep pumping his legs, get over the try line. But well, whether there's debate or not about whether he grounds this ball, it's good play from Jack Hughes, the back rower. He doesn't give up on his teammates, offers himself, and he gets the reward for Warrington. This is his first try in Warrington's colours for Jack Hughes. The only thing from the Salford Red Devils point of view as Sandow adds the extras is the number of times that first of all Matty Russell and then Jack Hughes escaped the net of the Salford defence. Well, Russell was the pinball wizard, wasn't he? He's benched across, he's got them a penalty and he's factored away across the field. But Jack Hughes has impressed me so far this season. You know what, if Whiteham wants to get to the grand final and win it this year, I think a team needs a great and athletic and fit back row. Two second rows and loose forward. And so far, Westerman, Hughes and Curry have looked that in the games I've watched them play. This is where I think they've got the advantage, Eddie. I think they're, they're big, they're powerful, they like to get forward, they push really hard for each other. You can see the support that Chris Hill has when he goes to the line. Whereas they're up against the Salford pack that may not be the biggest, but they're certainly robust. Well, I think uh, Jack Hughes likes this ground because he came off the subs bench and scored a career first hat trick of tries for the England Knights in the defeat of Samoa in 2013. Well, here's another penalty. You see that teams try and buy a bit of time. They catch the player, they try and hold him up for as long as they can. Then they take them to ground, try and work hard so they may have to play the ball slow and then the teammates can get set. It does look a little bit harsh. The a second or two seconds after the player hits the ground, they get up, they attempt to get up, but it's a fast stroke. Curry, oh, that could be another penalty to Warrington. It is, there were legs and hands and arms and all sorts in there, and George Griffin just didn't get out of the way. Again, Eddie, this is the, your reward, the urgency to which you get up, play the ball, you try and generate some decent play the balls for your teammates, and again, it's led to good field position here for Warrington. Well, the penalty count has suddenly evened up. It's now three in a row for Warrington. And here is uh, Ratchford, fed by Sandow. Be interesting to see tonight how those two combine after Kurt Gidley and Sandow have combined so well in the opening three matches for Warrington. And this is Ben Curry. So impressive, Ben Curry. So impressive, Curry. And he's got that down. That won't need to go upstairs. Ben Curry gets the second try for Warrington. They trail 6 0. They're ahead 10 6. And the kick to come. Warrington's best try scorer last year with 19 tries, Ben Curry. Only 21 years of age. A growing talent, Ben Curry. Such a good player, Ben Curry. Runs onto the ball. Another penalty at the play of the ball. Too messy, too long. Here's the second one, and it's that man, Ben Curry. Gets his, puts his head through the tackle. A lovely line. Show and goal. Lovely balance. He's a beautiful rugby league player, this fella. I talked to him before the match. Said you prefer loose forward. Played a little bit of standoff last week in the second half. Loose forward, centre, second row. What do you prefer? He said, I like being on the edge. I like running hard lines and 
If you can score a try, I will, but I just like making defenders account from it. So here's Sandow again with the opportunity to add two more points to the Warrington total. Three penalties went Salford's way early. They scored uh, one try. Three penalties have gone Warrington's way now, and they've scored two. And Sandow has improved that one as well. So from 6-0 down, it's now 12-6 Warrington. Well, Eddie, you give good teams field position as Ben Westwood looks on. You give them good field position and plays like Ben Curry on the left edge will score tries and on the right edge, the first try scorer was Jack Hughes. That show and go just takes Robert Louis' eyes off him and that's a big powerful finish from the back rower. I love to watch tries, Eddie, but I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit of defence as well. So far, the three we've sc seen scored haven't really had to, a, a lot to be done to get over the line. Wanted to pass it again to that left hand side, they know that it'll shift Salford's defence and won't trap them in the middle. Wonder if any of the three tries we've seen so far tonight will appear then in the Phil Clark Five on the website every Monday. Barry and Terry's biggest hits on Tuesday. Another penalty here for Warrington, and someone might end up on the naughty step tonight, the way that Robert <laughs> Hicks is blowing the pee out of this whistle. You'll be able to see that on the website as well and I think the referee is wanting a word with Tommy Lee. Do you know I think he's a bit harsh done to it. Josh Johnson he's pulling on his elbow. As he's pulling on his elbow he loses the ball. Harsh to it. Well that's what happened hasn't he? He's got hold of the arm which has dislodged the ball so probably unlucky then but captain's been warmed that he needs an improvement. So there's no contact with the ball there he's just pulled the arm and that's uh, fairly legitimate should be play up from that. There wasn't a little flick by the back of the hand of George Griffin you don't no. think. No. I don't think so. Players work on levers and controlling that ball and taking the opposition to ground. And from the, the opening 13 minutes, the team that goes on to win this game, Eddie, will be the most disciplined side. Ashton Sims, the Fijian, he's a bruising international. And uh, Sandow was shown the ball there by uh, Brad Dwyer. Dwyer took the tackle. Here is Sims. Sims then gets it away. And it's Curry again from Ratchford. Ratchford then takes the return. Russell, why they go to Penny? Oh, the ball! Oh, back brilliantly by Penny to Russell, and that I think is a candidate for the Phil Clark five if it is given. They've got to try on the field. Just want to check the foot in touch by Kevin Penny before he got rid of the pass. Well, Eddie, this is class. This is Warrington, like we've seen over the years. And Kevin Penny, does he get his foot in touch? Oh, yes, he does. And he has to touch the line oh. by the touch judge. Well, there we go, giving him all the praise. But well, you can see clearly his right foot is touching the white line. I think the issue for the touches there is when does he get rid of the ball? He's trying to look at two points, the foot and the ball. It's, uh, it's quite a difficult decision, that, but you know, we've got the video referee, the video referee is going to sort that out. He's clearly in touch before that ball's released. This will be no try. Well, it would be one of the Phil Clark five no tries. That's the case. And no try it is. Yeah, people will wonder why the touch judge didn't see that, Stuart, because he's right there, but you're right. He looks at the heel, he wonders when the ball was ridden, or got rid of by the player. Look, that's the view. He, and it's a split second, it's not like that. And that's slowed down as well, Eddie. That's what I say, it's not it's, like it's, that. It's, it's having to look at two different points. If you, if you get too close, and if there's any slight criticism there, it's probably a couple of metres too close, you can't see the two things at once. You've got to look at two separate points. Well, he did well. He did well to uh, advise because it looked from up here all the way. And a great try. Another penalty from Robert Hicks. Wow. The count is mounting. It's eight now, four apiece. Yeah, well, the stream is that's just in 14 and a half minutes, Eddie. So relieving penalties for both sides that are leading to points. It's Justin Carnegie and the powerful winger. They rely so much on the likes of him and Josh Griffin, Junior South. Dobson drops the pass off to Craig Kopjak. Kopjak, the Welsh international, of course. 10 metres inside, or rather, 20 metres inside is our position half. Gets the passes away down the right hand side, but nothing there that uh, Robert Louis could do. Solid defence there for Warrington players around the ball carrier who was Junior Sow Lee drops the ball off here goes Brad Dwyer had to cut him down 
Now it's with Dobson, dab to the in-goal area, try Salford. Who led the chase, was it, was it Jones? It was. Josh Jones gets the try. It's end-to-end -end stuff, it's great entertainment on a Thursday night. We're 16 minutes in, and we've had 22 points so far, I think another two's on the way. And in again, what's it come off the back of? It's come off the back of the penalty. And here it is. You can see that Warrington all over Griffin. And the referee saying, nope, we're going to give another penalty away. But the intelligence and the neat little kick in behind the Warrington defensive line, they get up, they hold him, they have to little deal, they've got to deal with Michael Dobson. But the onrushing Salford attack, well, there was just too many of them there. And you can see that what they've got, Salford, they've got some commitment to work for each other, and Josh Jones scores the try. First try for Salford for Josh Jones. And uh, Gareth O'Brien will now take this shot at goal. Dobson is up the other end of the field. The first one was from Dobson. It was on the other side of the field. He's a left-footed kicker. This is just to the left-hand side of the post. Perfect for a right-footed kicker like O'Brien. I wonder if that's the reason or is there something wrong with Dobson? He has the extras, does Gareth O'Brien. Pumps the ball over the top of the stand, that far side, or that uh, left-hand side and into the car park. 12 apiece. It is a wonderful kick from Dobson. Look at how many red shirts are in the frame. They know that that's coming. They know that if they follow the number seven, if they chase up some of the things he's trying to orchestrate, they'll get good value from it. Doesn't look like there's much wrong with Dobson. Fielded the uh, the kick off there quite quite easily. It's felt a bit like a basketball match, hasn't it? When one team gets to the end, they score some points. And it's the penalties, isn't it, that both teams need to try and eradicate to prevent themselves defending near their own line. Warrington didn't like that particular tackle on him. And the Warrington were very quickly out of the blocks. Like that play the ball. And they are again, as Lee gets the ball to Kopjak, he finds Louis. Louis then to O'Brien. Sandow met him with a bit of help from Ryan Atkins. Lee. Flanagan. Last tackle, they're still inside their own half, Salford. Kick will have to be good here from Dobson. It's high, but it's straight into the arms of Lynham. Tomorrow night we are across the Pennines. Who would have thought we would be watching the two bottom sides after the opening three rounds of the first utility Super League? But that's what we are tomorrow. Leeds against Huddersfield. Both of them hit by injury, of course, this season. Both desperate to get their season underway. And one of them will do that tomorrow night. We're live at Headingley from 7.30. And then sometimes, sorry, Eddie, and sometimes when we have the luxury of going down pitch side and going in the tunnel and talking to players pre-game and the Salford players, they had a look in their eye and a real air of confidence that when they got to the changing rooms and they asked a couple of them, do you think you can beat Warrington? And they said, yeah, absolutely. We let ourselves down last week. We want to put in the same performance that we did when we played against Saints. Warrington love to keep this ball alive, don't they? Curry did exactly that to uh, Ryan Atkins. It was a... A little bit of a scruffy pass, but he got to the hands eventually. Here is Sandow again. It goes high off the boot. This will have snow on it when it comes down. O'Brien's underneath it. Great take by Garrett O'Brien. I think we forget what just a difficult transition it must have been for Gareth O'Brien. He's left one club where he's been since he's a junior. He's arrived at Salford, and then he's gone from being a scrum half to being a fullback. The two radically different roles with different responsibilities, and yet he's done remarkably well this season. He has, and he's keeping out uh, the number one for Salford last year, Niall Evels, who has yet to start a match, but he will make an entrance off the bench at some stage. Dobson with a good kick down the line. And Matty Russell will pick this up right close to his own goal line, and he's met by a trio of Salford runners. Eddie, and that's why it's important to turn teams around and find some space so your, your defenders, your teammates can get up there, trap them in the corner and really turn this group Kevin Penny helping to bring this ball away from his own line, gets to the 20 metre mark on tackle number 3 Chris Hill England international he's so Warrington good. skipper yeah he's so good Chris Hill, late footwork at the line to land on his front oh, 40-20 attempt here 40-20 attempt here but Gareth O'Brien made sure it wasn't going to go for a 40-20 a good chase though, led by Jack Hughes and Stefan Ratchford. 
good chase and an even better tackle really knocked him back he talked about Gareth O'Brien as that extra pivot that extra ball player but kick returns perhaps not his forte Tommy Lee from dummy half gets it away to Justin Carney that was high from Westerman yeah I think after nine penalties in the first 17 minutes he's reluctant to blow it again Ben Maddock, Masella goes on another marauding run. Yeah, it was round the chops, that, there's no doubt about it. Here Eddie, is Carney again. And you look at the metres that they made, all because of Carney's first tackle, that he plays the ball quick, Masella gets on the back of that, and then Carney comes again. As he kicked down the line, swept up at the back by Russell. Well, he bounces off the tackles when they get to him, but he evaded a couple then before they eventually got to him. And it's Jack Hughes again for Warrington, surrounded by three. Jones is quickly off. Reese Evans. And a big game, Reese Evans, in defence, particularly against Leeds in round one. Ratchford, Hill, cuts back this way, gets the ball away to Ratchford. Ratchford bounces off one, gets away from two. Unfortunately for Salford, there were reinforcements there in the shape of Copjack. This is Sandow, Sandow looking to run the show, he's attacking him down that left-hand side, finds Kevin Penny, Kevin Penny cuts back on the inside again, finds Russell. Now then, Russell, this time they get to him, Salford. Here comes the fifth and last. Again, the attack down the left-hand side, Sandow then changes the direction with a little kick off the outside of the boot. Picked up nicely by O'Brien, halted though by Ratchford. Well, you've got to be brave, haven't you, been a full-back? He might not be the biggest, but he certainly gets there and he likes to do his job. We saw Sam Tompkins as a youngster make that transition from half-back to full-back and he's never looked back since. Salford really need to help each other here now. You can see that Tommy Lee just forcing some of his teammates into centre field. They know that Warrington are really up for this game. Yes, they are, because Tony Smith celebrating seven years in charge. If they win, this would be their best start to the season since 1999. But this is another penalty conceded by the Wolves. That's the benefit of having a big man, difficult to put down. Kevin Penny having the devil's own job trying to get the big man on the floor, complete the tackle, and a penalty in shoes. The previous set of six thought there were some really good inputs from Chris Hill, the number eight in the screen now. A couple of big charges, chase the kickers, the skipper he's trying to inspire and lead his team. Mark Flanagan helps it on. Louis, lovely ball from him. And here goes the number 33, Josh Jones, and he's held, and then he's not held. It's play on. He keeps going. In the end, Ratchford comes back and pulls him down. And Griffin going for it himself. Josh Griffin trying to catch them cold on the short side. It's Johnson. Johnson burrows over and scores for Salford. Greg Johnson tries in each of the last two, the home win against St Helens and the home win against Widnes here. Greg Johnson, once upon a time at Wakefield, then at Bat Batley. He was in the championship dream team in 2013. And Greg Johnson has nudged the Red Devils ahead again. Well, yes again, Eddie, it's another penalty. The big man, Murdoch Masilla. He's absolutely quality, he turned up to play, Robert Louis, look at that well weighted pass, Reese Evans shoots the line, Josh Jones just hits a perfect hole, gets up, tries to go forward, Stefan Ratchford with that last ditch effort, and then the Salford players all getting excited, a couple of them thinking that the ball's going to go wide, and Greg Johnson, well the winger, scores. I don't think he fancied the pass, Barrett. I think the man was too far for me. He thought there's no way I could draw that left to right. I can tell you, I've worked under Tony Smith in his time at Leeds. He absolutely hates soft dummy half tries like that. I'm sure he's getting some very stern, very clear messages out. Let's get our tackling head back on, please. And Eddie, they've conceded two soft tries, haven't they? Junior Sal the first one, then that one. That could be 12 points. Well, it might be, it's certainly 10, it's Gareth O'Brien here again from this left-hand side of the field, the right-footed kicker. And he had the extras against his former club, oh, that's a lovely draw on that. Just like one of Terry O'Connor's drives off the first tee, a royal witness. <laughs> well, some glorious play from Salford, but I don't believe that this is it. 
you look at the hooker, I'll tell you the mistake he makes, Brad Dwight, he's too high. If he gets either one or both of his knees on the floor, he's underneath the ball and he can prevent that ball being put down. Sloppy, sloppy Warrington defence. Dobson is underneath the kickoff and uh, Salford, well, I said at the start of this, they have been a breath of fresh air in 2016. They've been playing well again. They've been absolutely brilliant and Ian Watson, it's it's good to see a, a local lad doing well and he's got the guidance and he can draw on all that information from Tim Sheens. He's learning his trade and they're doing a great job, Salford, this year. You know, you talked before about belief, Terry, and I wonder whether what Leicester City have done in football in the Premier League, maybe witness and Salford teams well, like that realise that's a 40-20. That's a brilliant kick from O'Brien. I think the other sides now who've been in the lower regions have thought, no, we have got a belief, we can play. Salford are demonstrating this season that's a fantastic kick. They're taking the game to teams that on paper should be coming here and winning convincingly. You've got to back yourself, haven't you? You, you get that through your defence and playing on the front foot. A fabulous kick from Gareth O'Brien. Gets Kevin Penny that he's unaware of this kick, but that's the confidence to, to drop the ball, kick it, and place it where you want it. That's why Salford are doing well. They're not afraid of defending, they're not afraid of doing all the hard work, and that's what Ian Watson was saying pre game. Always been a big fan of Gareth O'Brien, he's proving why he is a match so far. Here is Justin Carney, he's five meters away, wanted a quick play of the ball, gets it away to Lee, and Tommy Lee gets it away, and Cam. Um, Craig Kopchak get over the line, no he can't, that's good defence from Curry, Lee again, the big man, Big Benny, and they hold him up Eddie, over the line. Look at the size of him, there was five Warrington defenders in attendance there, he's absolutely huge, keeps pumping those legs, his biceps are bigger than my head and I've got a huge head. Absolutely. <laughs> With nothing in it. <laughs> <laughs> this is Gareth O'Brien. Once again, two tackles remaining in this set. Josh Griffin drops the ball off. Robert Louis. They've kept him reasonably quiet thus far. Tackled by Jack Hughes. O'Brien have reached the last, so the kick from Dobson here. Crossfield into the danger zone. Well stolen! saying on the sideline Stuart Cummings that maybe he's offside they've got no try called him offside from the side that's why Robert Hicks is checking this so obviously a crucial call what will the video reveal give him no try on the field it's very close isn't it I actually think that's uh, just about behind it's very very straight I think I've called him just on side I think from there Again, though, Stuart, it's been called no try on the field. It's got to be 100% conclusive I, that he is I, I not in front of the ball. I think there's enough there to show that he's that both feet are behind the ball when the ball is kicked. Certainly very close, but he only has to be behind the ball. Well, this so is the only the one that will tell us. He's the third man from the top, isn't he, Stuart? Third from the top, I think he's behind the ball. Well, our camera's behind the man, though, as well, isn't it? It's a difficult angle to judge that from. It is, but you can you can try and judge across the lines on the pitch, same sort of distance away. I think there's enough there that shows that he's onside, and this try should be given. Well, hang on, they're looking here, I think, at the grounding. There's no knock-on. I think this is going to be given. I think Junior South's got a second, Stuart. I think you're right. So they're looking that way. Nothing wrong with the, the, the contest in the air, or the grounding. I think this will be overturned. And it is turned upside down, and Junior Sow, right underneath the stick, scores his second try of this match. Two in the defeated hall in round one, I wonder if it be two in a win here tonight. Well, look at that for a kick that sets up that field position from Gareth O'Brien, and there's a discipline when you're carrying the ball, and the big strength from the big Tongan forward, held up by five Warrington players, but the kick was right on the button, the disciplined chase from Junior Sow, he buys a bit of time, he sees as he's running onto that ball that it's not coming down, so he just holds off and then he pounces right at the end. Big and effort, big start for Salford. Massive start, O'Brien to add the extras, 
and he doesn't miss from those. It's 24 points to 12. Now remember, had Kevin Penny's heel not been in touch, it could have been a completely different story because then it was 12-6. It would have been 18-6 to Warrington. Look at the scoreline now. And that was, that was slide rule stuff, that. Well, the Red Devils winning all those 50-50 battles. And Junior Sow, he's no right to jump higher than his opponent. He's no right to take that ball out of the grasp of the Warrington player, but he does that and dabs down for six points. 24 points to 12. I didn't expect this. No, not many possibly did. Warrington coming here with a 100% start to the season behind them. It's not over yet, of course, but this fellow, look at him go. Murdoch Masilla, what great yards he makes up the middle. Eddie, it's just the men that he commits to the tackle, so if he's committing three, four men, there's obviously going to be some spare somewhere which Robert Louis and Michael Dobson are look to exploit. They were making a couple of changes, Warrington, perhaps Gary Wheeler is there waiting to come on, so too is George King as that ball trickles its way over the dead ball line. I said before the game, Eddie, that when Lee Brees retired as a player at Warrington, it was as if they had the voice box removed from the side. And maybe the addition of Kirk Gidley to the squad was to put a voice on the field for situations like this, when the team are under pressure, things aren't going well. He isn't there tonight, and the question for Warrington is which player will fill that role. Those Lee Brees on the side, he can only take on so many messages, but it's the players out there who need to direct, you know, and dig themselves out of the hole they're in at the moment. 12 points behind, still a long way to go. Yes, Kurt Gidley appears. Oh, as uh, Jack Hughes loses possession in that uh, crunching tackle from Dobson. Kirk, oh, and then they lose it as well, so they come back for the first one. Um, Kurt Gidley appears to be the missing link for Warrington tonight in every sense of the word. And you've obviously got Darrell Clark, who's playing really well this year. Uh, a lot of people saying that he was quiet last year, but I don't think that he had much to play off last year. He's got a very big side. And a side that are going forward, they're playing with good form. The likes of Jack Hughes coming in, Joel Westerman coming into the forwards. So they've got something to play off now, the backs, and especially the half backs for Warrington. Well, with Dwight coming off for a rest, it looks as though Stefan Ratchford's gone into the bit of hooker. I think he actually made his debut for Salford nine years ago as a hooker for them in a cup game. He's almost the Swiss Army knife of a rugby league team, can play absolutely anywhere. <laughs> he can, you're right. Well, Warrington have made a double change. We'll see Warrington, by the way, next weekend in the south of France against the Catalan Dragons. Warrington have made a double change. Salford here are making a triple change. Three new fresh legs, uh, three new sets of fresh legs <laughs> coming on the field. Well, they need to make sure that they're warm because they've got to get into the speed of this game. It's been a rip roll in 31 minutes. Here's Jack Hughes again. Causing Warrington all sorts of trouble. Uh, jo uh, Josh Jones, I beg your pardon. Josh Jones is uh, causing Warrington all sorts of trouble down this left-hand side. Louis, nice chip over the top, that is. Matthew Russell's after this. He could be in a spot of bother. He could be in a spot of bother. He is in a spot of bother. Good Great case. Good stuff from Robert Louis. He spots the Kevin Bennett. He's in the defensive line. A lot of ground to make up. He dabs that ball behind. And a very impressive chase. Here we go. That's where Robert Lewitt sees the space. You look at the intent on Junior South. It makes it difficult for Matty Russell. By some time, and I think Robert Hicks cops a crack as well. And I think that's the first involvement of Jordan Wallen since he came on, and that was to trap the Warrington player in goal. And it's reminiscent of three weeks ago when we came here. They did a similar thing to St. Helens. That intensity and appetite to tackle and defend like that. Help them to get the win that night. Will it be the same tonight? It says you talked about completion rates and Salford completing high. They're running at 100% at the minute. Well, it's not bad, is it? So that means that when they do have the ball, Eddie, they're full of energy. Gordon one plays the ball to another of the substitutes. That's Logan Tompkins. Oh, great ball to O'Brien. Great ball from him to Griffin. Josh Griffin, bang, and over he goes. Does he get down? Maybe it doesn't matter because the ball came backwards. And it's Logan Tompkins, isn't it, who's following up? Well, there's a real decision here. He's given it. He's given it without reference upstairs. And Chris Hill isn't pleased. Well, 
Josh Griffin did brilliantly well. I think he released the ball. Yeah, did, did he get the ball down? Or did he who grounded it or was the follower? Well, the touch of uh, Tony Martin said, uh, send it upstairs because he might have lost that ball. Robert Hicks said, I think it's irrelevant. He lost it backwards to Nice, and that's when he awarded the try. Well, that's what the debate was about. But again, nice little, nice little touch from Gareth O'Brien. Does he get this ball down here? Yeah. He gets that ball down, then it goes backwards anyway. Well, it's a pass, isn't it? Yeah, pass well, it still gets, he still gets that ball down, though, Phil. Josh Can Griffin. I get two tries for that. Josh Griffin scores this try. There you go. There's the first one. And then he passes it. There's the next one. Yeah. Is that so, an eight-point try? I think it goes down to Josh Griffin, I think, the try. Yeah, I think you're right. Josh Griffin. He gets the, the four points. He did really well. This fella is, is playing out of his skin, Gareth O'Brien. You would expect him to tonight against the club that said, well, thanks a lot, Gareth, but there's the door. Off you pop, and he's come to Salford. Eddie has got so much vision, got so much composure, the youngster. Here's another one of those brilliant conversions. Oh, he's on the wrong side. Eddie, you called it. You called well, it too it early. Though, it looked as though it was all right, that, from his angle. Well, Josh Griffin, Griffin everyone thinks that they... He's blew this opportunity, that's a try, he gets that down. Whether that comes out of his hand or not is still a try from them. Be but interesting to see what the debate is at half-time in the dressing room, whether Tompkins is claiming it or Griffin is. It doesn't matter, there's four points on the board. The well, conversion missed, it's close. It was, Eddie, but you've got to be in the frame, haven't you? And that's what Salford are. Whenever they carry in the ball, whenever they kick in the ball, there's a lot of the red jerseys just pushing up and giving that shape to the halfbacks. You've said Salford have got to be in the frame. Whiten want to stay in the game, and to do that, they can't concede the next points. Centella's found themselves in a similar situation here, and it fell away from them. Are Warrington good enough to have learnt from that and to turn things around in the middle of a match? It's a massive task for them. This is fascinating for a team who we thought may go top of the table tonight with a win. Well, it is similar to last time we were here because when we were here three, uh, three weeks ago, was it? Or two weeks ago, anyway. A couple of weeks ago. <laughs> uh, St Helens were being beaten at half time 32 points to six. It's 28-12 at the moment, and there's still four minutes remaining of this first half. Eddie, you can't get you can't get bored and go away from the little things in the game. It's all about effort on effort. That's whether you're defending or you're taking the ball forward. You've got to do those little dirty things that sometimes you're going to get whacked. You're going to get sat on your backside, but you've got to keep on turning up and doing all those things. And at present, Salford are the team that look the most urgent. Nice kick from Ratchford, but I think it's going to run too long when it does. He's bound to be ring rusty a bit, isn't he, Stefan Ratchford? It's his first appearance of the year after that knee injury. And Justin Carney now. Well, what Stefan Ratchford is, he's a very talented athlete, isn't he? He can, he can create a try out of nothing. Well, luckily he did have some time, action time, playing for Salford uh, Warrington's reserve second team last week when they played at Hull, so the reintroduction of a second team has given him a chance to get out on the field and play before he come out here tonight. Yes, I hope the other Super League clubs are listening to that because not all of them are involved in this uh, reserve team competition and there's a real belief that there should be a proper second team competition restored. Yes, but, uh, Ratchford here has come up with a ball steal on the ground and conceded another penalty. Well, it's frustration. They're not winning the battles. They're not controlling the play of the ball. And again, he's just looking to, to get hold of that lever. Two and the players up, lost. Te up top, Tez, the communication when you're defending is one up top, one down below, try and get them down to the floor within your own time so your defensive line can get set. No communication there from Warrington. A drive forward here from Adam Wong, the two Wong brothers in the uh, 17 tonight. Now it's with Robert Louis. Robert Louis, so impressive against the Saints, just held up short of the line. Plays the ball to Logan Tompkins. Oh, it could be a try. Oh, if he could have got that down. If he could have cut that down, Adam Wong, it would have been a try. Yeah, he loses it, Eddie, over the try line. So it's a 20-metre restart for Warrington. But again, they're getting into space, aren't they? They're crossing the line, but just didn't quite have control. I wonder if we look back on that at the end of 80 minutes and wonder whether if that was a key moment in this match. Can I tell you at the end of 80 minutes? Of course you can. 
You probably get it wrong, but of course you can. <laughs> Later on, Michael Dobson is at uh, the touchscreen with John Wells at full time. Don't forget that. What will he be talking about? Salford win or disappointment for them and a great win for Warrington. It will be a great win for Warrington if they come back now from this. Chris Hill, they've got it in them, Warrington, though, haven't they? There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Ratchford gets the ball away to Gary Wheeler. Wheeler was almost crawling then on the floor and uh, was maybe after a penalty. This is a high kick from Ratchford. It's good, too. Sandow's after it. The ball was knocked backwards to Masilla. And Carney gets it wide. Great run here from Junior Sal. The man is on a hat trick. Well, that's, that is not a side that's low on confidence, is it? Well, Kevin Penny had chased that high kick, so he was missing off his wing. One more pass could have found some space for a long-range try for the Red Devils. Came number off 20. a Warrington man, didn't it? Yeah, the number 20, Kevin Penny, was a long way, and he's trying to find work. Adam Wallen again. Please, Taken down just shy of halfway. Half a minute left of this first half. It's with Robert Louis. He says, let's have a kick and chase. Oh, and it bounces horribly. And in the end, it's taken control of by Matty Russell. And he gets away again. He's a, an elusive runner from fullback Russell. Well, they're quite happy to kick early. And that was on the, the third play. I know that they're running out of time here. And maybe it was a, an attacking kick that thought there might have been a mistake. This will be the last tackle of this first half of fancy. There it is. Ian Watson's men have done a fine job. It was a topsy-turvy start. It was 6-0 to Salford with Junior South's try. That lasted six minutes. Then it was six apiece. Courtesy of Jack Hughes. Then Curry edged the Warrington Wolves ahead, 12-6. And after that, we've seen four Salford tries from Jones... Johnson, a second from Sow, and one from Josh Griffin. By 28 points to 12 at half time. The AJ Bell Stadium is home, sweet home, right now for Salford. Ten months since they last lost here. So, incidentally, 18 points to 34 against Warrington last May, their last defeat on this ground. They are 40 minutes away from claiming a prized scalp of the Warrington Wolves, whose 100% record at the start of this season is very much on the line. They were aiming to go top of the table tonight. Chris Sandow gets us underway in the second half. And his opposite number, Michael Dobson, was underneath the kickoff. And it's a big 40 minutes for the Wolves, this. It is, Eddie, and for Salford as well. The Salford, the mindset doesn't need to change. They just need to keep on doing what they were doing in that first half, just keep on playing. Whatever they talked about during or before the game, they must do that in this second half. And you look at them, and Barry mentioned it before, they just made one mistake in that first half. And only out of all the Salford players that have been on the pitch, there's only five of them that have made double figures in defence. So that shows how much energy that they have when they're carrying the ball. Yes, it's, uh, and it's remarkable, really. They only did make one mistake because the, uh, the temperature is low almost zero or below and it's been sleeting from the very first whistle and it still is and uh, that was a good catch by Kevin Penny in those circumstances as well Eddie and we always talk about completion rates and there's some coaches that don't like talking about completion rates but you don't have to and I've said it before you don't have to just shove the ball up your jumper you don't have to think well I'm not going to pass it I just want to get to the end of the set of six here kick it into the corner and really defend it's not about five drives in the kick it's about backing yourself and if you think that pass is on you throw it Chris Hill looking to throw a pass here but uh, there are four around him and he, he takes the tackle tackle number four midway inside the Salford half with Sandow a kick down the line looking for the fleet-footed Penny but Gareth O'Brien is over to it quickly well there's and one thing that Warrington need in this second half Eddie if it's had any chance and that's more enthusiasm than opponents they've uh, clearly got to be quicker to every single ball here back up in defence and work to get themselves back in and it's going to be difficult in the situation but they've still got the playing personnel we had a point to meet in the first half they obviously have to be the team to score first, but they don't have to score straight away. They just need to somehow make sure the defence is better. 
Well, four tackles gone this set, and uh, here they come with Robert Louis. He just drops it off again to Murdoch Masilla, and this will now be the the last. He plays the ball. Whoa! And uh, the kick from Gareth O'Brien. It's a great. Oh, was it a great kick? The touch judge has got his flag up. I think that Gareth O'Brien was hit late. Brian Atkins had it. He's in at, in at marker. After failing to get Murdoch Masilla down to the floor, he puts pressure on Gareth O'Brien, and is that a shoulder charge? Yeah, that's what the touches is called. Shoulder charge by uh, Ryan Atkins. And uh, looking at that, there's certainly rotation, and it's, he's got it right. Is the penalty not where the ball bounces? Should be obviously at the point of where it enters if it went in on the full. I don't think it does, though, does it? I don't think the ball did, actually. It looked oh, it did. It went out on the full. It's still where the penalty is, even though the ball's gone out on the full, it's where it lands. Is it? It's ten metres in from the point of entry. Even though it's gone out on the full? Even though it's gone out on the full. Oh, OK. Fair enough. Well, you learn something every day. I can't believe you were questioning Stuart, Eddie. <laughs> no, no, I, would, no I, I just thought because it was a mistake and the ball's out on the full, although it was a mistake caused by foul play. I get you. I get you, Stuart. Thank you. Well, it's took less than three minutes to, for the opening penalty. And again, again, it's gone against Warrington. And they're the team now that are defending 15 metres from the line. Oh, oh, they're not now. There was a little mistake there from Tommy Lee, one of the very few mistakes from Salford, and it was in a crucial position as well. OK, uh, let's get the half-time news. Here's Angela Powers. I spoke to Tony Smith and he remarked about the speed of this game and any attempt to control it seems to be leading to penalties. They've got to find a way to control that aspect of the game. He's, he's happy they're not making too many errors with the ball in hand in these conditions. They've just got to get more of it. Play to the referee and don't give away field position because he says that's what's oh. causing the damage. The game plan is working well for Salford. They just want to tighten up that defence. Start again this half at nil-nil. And in these conditions, that's the right way to do it. The news on Jordan Walney, he has got an arm string, a hamstring injury and he won't play any more part in this game. Thanks, Anjan. Here is a terribly sad sight. It's Gary Wheeler again. I think and he just seems Achilles, to go down. You know, it's his first appearance of the season. He hasn't played more than 19 games in any of his nine years in the game, Gary Wheeler. And it looks like this is a serious blow and a serious injury for him again here. I think that's his Achilles. I've, I've done that particular injury. He lands on his the instep of his foot and you see a clunk. In my opinion, I'm probably guessing, but it's an educated opinion. I think he's well. He's a brave done some man. Damage. He's a brave man if he's just on his Achilles, because as he goes down, I thought his ankle went underneath him. And he's a he's a fabulous player, Gary Wheeler. But you just wish that he had a bit more luck. His, his injury, his injury yeah. woes are well documented. And as I say, he, he's been in the game nine years. He's never managed more than 19 games it's cruel, in any it? one of it's those cruel. seasons. You know. He has all the talent in the world, but it's a problem for him. Well, him leaving the field now would make this an absolutely monumental comeback here now for the Wolves. If they can fight their way back in this match. Got Brad Dyer back on the field here now. They were good when he's on there. George King takes them forward. But they're going to have to seize every possible chance in the second half. Yes, they are. We've reached the last tackle and Sandow again looking for the corner. And it scoots off the surface here, which is bound to be wet after all the sleep, rain and snow. This is where they need to play the game for me, Eddie. This is where they need to keep turning Salford around. Take the, the ball and put it near their try line. You want to start putting that bit of doubt in their mind and maybe having a little look. And I know that we've got two good wingers, or Salford have got two good wingers in Greg Johnson and Justin Carney. But maybe have a look at kicking over to Salford's left side instead of over to the right, because this is where all the danger men are. Well, here comes Salford again with the Justin Carney. And he acts like a, an additional forward, doesn't he, when he drifts in off the wing. Big enough to play in the pack. Logan Tompkins gets it wide to Josh Griffin, giving them back into the path of, of Johnson. Good work from him, he fights to get to his feet, plays the ball to Logan Tompkins. Tompkins halted by Stefan Ratchford. Dobson, dummy half. Has Logan Tompkins been penalised here? Logan yeah. Here. For having a go at the referee, yeah. Robert Hicks. He's not happy with the tackle. No problem. He's standing up from questioning things and asking questions. But you don't talk to me that kind of language, getting that kind of language. You better than that. 
Coaches absolutely hate when a player or a team in possession fire a player, give first of all a penalty away, therefore possession. Doesn't matter how frustrated you are, you've got to crack on, you've got to get on with your job, and they're under pressure now, the Red Devils. They are, he obviously gave uh, Robert Hicks a bit of a mouthful. So Warrington in possession where they might have been defending up the other end and as it is it's Sandow and Sandow gets the pass away but Matty Russell had to get right round his boot laces to pick that up and then he was hit by two tacklers Dwyer, Dwyer then gets it away to Westerman Westerman thought he was away from Josh Jones but not to be Dwyer again, this is Ratchford, Ratchford to Jack Hughes Salford muscling up in defence again four tackles gone Dwyer goes down the short side stabs a kick in brilliantly watched by O'Brien Eddie that set of six Warrington looked a touch hesitant players getting caught with the ball they were looking to pass the ball in all of a sudden they're changing the mind and pulling it back in I think Gareth O'Brien's watched Brad Dwyer play a few times know how his mind thinks knows what risks he'll take what players he'll go for and he was perfectly placed, wasn't he, for that cheeky kick along the floor. He was. Adam Walnut picks himself up, plays the ball to Tompkins. That was a bit high on George Griffin. So a penalty now goes against Warrington. Well, from Stefan Ratchford. Just goes across the shoulder. George Griffin straight away looks at ref. I don't think that realistically that's a penalty. Well, he's got him across the chest, hasn't he? So he's probably unlucky on that tackle. Goes over the top of the shoulder. The, the hand makes contact on the chest. Griffin looked expectantly and Ratchford looked disgustedly and surprisingly at the referee for that uh, penalty to be awarded against him. Inside the Warrington half though now with Dobson. He gets the pass away once again to Adam Wall. Robert Jordan not going to play any further part in this match as we heard at half time. Here he goes again, Ben Murdoch Masilla. He's spinning round on one leg, the ball comes out and the ball was stolen, penalty. Well is this a penalty or does he lose on collision? Ben Curry, well, Ben Curry's standing his ground for a young man up against the big barn door. Murdoch Masilla, it probably for me is a loose carry from Ben Murdoch Masilla. He's yeah, I agree. commanding a lot of attention because he is so big, so powerful, good leg drive. And he's waving the ball about. The ball comes loose. So make on it sure. Well, it's the, the same thing that we see week after week with players trying to wrap the ball up. They get a, a, a good hold of the ball. And if the ball comes out from that situation, the referee doesn't have a lot of option other than giving the penalty. And the referee wants the two captains to come to him now for a, a little bit of an admonishment. Well, discussion with the referee doesn't do anybody any good, only the referee. And I think he's got a case actually. That was a ball steal. Yeah, it was. It was a ball steal. You can see the aggressor in Ben Curry. Although he's a youngster, he won't back down to anybody. And Salford will lining this ball up, just going for two points, Ed. Just take the steam out of this. Credit where it's due. Robert Hicks handled that perfectly. Yeah. Players all know where they stand. He's given them the right signals, the right messages. Gareth O'Brien was one of six players who wanted to use as goal kickers last year. We hope he knows kicking against them, he can land these two. And he does. Just increases the lead by two points. First points of the second half then, from the boot of Gareth O'Brien. 30 points to 12. Well, it might not be a try, but penalties are definitely leading to points in this game. It's a big part now for that man Ian Watson. He knows that his team are in well and truly in the driving seat 18 points in front it's a big set of six as well and a, and a big 10 minutes i believe eddie because if salford can keep the pressure on tony smith's men as he sat alongside richard agar 
Well, Warrington will start to get a bit rattled and do things that they're not used to. Well, Warrington won 34 points to 18 on this ground last year. It was a hat-trick from Gene Ormsby. But here they find themselves 30 points to 12 in arrears. Three converted tries. Reese Evans gets the tackle in. Scrags the man to the ground. Another good run from Wong, but good tackling by Warrington. Just Jones and uh, Mitchell Dodds is on the field. They've waited a long time to see Mitchell Dodds with the wrist injury, delayed his start to his Super League career. He's out there now, though. Look out for him, number 15. Eddie, that's a conservative set of six from Salford. It's just five drives straight from the rook. Nice easy passes, soft hands, and get to the kick. And look at this red line here. Yes, and the little bobble in front of Matty Russell didn't do him any favours whatsoever. By the way, Mitchell Dodds, his last appearance was in the NRL Grand Final. North Queensland Cowboys last October, he came on as a substitute. But what have Warrington this is, a, got? this is a different kettle of fish from that for him, isn't it? And he it? was another player that benefited from that reserves match that Stefan Ratchford played in. So, some minutes under his belt before he gets into the first team and the Super League. Sandow, just inside the 40. This is a possibility. It's a possibility, but it's actually now looking more likely it's going to go over the line. Wow, it does. That was so close, wasn't it? They know he needed to turn this game. They need three converted tries to get themselves a point at the very least here. But there's some urgency again in them. They've got half an hour to do it. It's harder when you've got players making over 10 metres with simple carries like that. Determined ones, though. Easy brings some stopping down, just incarnate. Greg Johnson follows it up with a second run. Goes down, tackle number two. Wants to get to his feet quickly and play the ball. Here is Tommy Lee. He then gets it to Louis. Then Murdoch Masilla again. Met by Ben Curry. Down he goes. Last time those two met, there was a little bit of a clash on the floor, as you saw. Tompkins looks for the runner, and the runner is Wong. And well, it's a penalty here he for obstruction. forward, Masilla. Well, he, has a, he runs straight to Ben Curry, Barry. Yeah, That's does. what he does. He does. They're having a, a nice was, little battle, them two. Something was said, and then he plays the ball, he runs straight forward at him. And then obviously there's the obstruction. But again, no need to do that. They're the team that's in possession. They're the ones who've got the ball. Don't give that penalty away. Well, they have, and here come Warrington then. With that man, Curry. And he's met by it. Murdoch Masilla. And he gets the penalty from Murdoch Masilla. <laughs> and then he ruffles his head, and that does nobody any good. Well, Eddie, I said to Murdoch Masilla pre-game, I said, do you know the lad you're up against? Ben Curry is one of our standouts in Super League. He said, I don't really know many of the lads yet. Currently, they're playing against... Well, certainly after this game, we will. As Justin Carney, there's an altercation with Sims. His head rocks back. I think he just pushed in the face. But it's starting to warm get a bit tasty, isn't it? warming up. Well, who benefits from this, do you think? I think Salford again under the skin. A Salford rattle or a Warrington rattle? No, no, Salford are rattling. Warrington, Salford are the team who are in control. They're eight point, 18 points up. There's a big challenge there from the two back rowers. Maybe hands in from Masilla. And Ben Cuddy comes forward and all of a sudden, it's just like red rag to a bull. He steps forward. We've not seen the last of this. Both sides just going at each other. Both off for 10 minutes by the looks of it. Curry and Murdoch Masilla and Stewart is that good refereeing? Well, it, it's, it's sent Curry to the Carney. Yeah. Is it Carney going to go to the bin? It is. Justin Carney goes to the bin. Carney's gone to the bin for pushing Ashton Sims in the face. Good refereeing, Stewart. Well, I think so. I think he needed to calm it down. He's uh, sent Ben Curry off for his reaction to getting up, rubbing his head. Something that referees were talking about at the start of the season um, about getting some respect back into the game. Well, at the end of it all, there's a penalty to Warrington. It was Murdoch Mustilla who was penalised. Here goes Ashton Sims. Brave carry, brave carry when both teams are at it, Eddie. Plays the ball here to Dwyer. Dwyer then finds Ratchford. Ratchford gets the ball away once again. Good work by Jack Hughes. He's made 15 metres backwards, Jack Hughes then. <laughs> Reese Evans now. 
Rhys Evans would run from him so close to the line. Plenty of tackles left in the bank here for Warrington. A little burrow to try and get over the line like we saw in the first half. I'm not so sure about that play, Eddie. That was from Lynham. This is Ratchford. Here they come again. <laughs> it's getting tasty. It really is getting tasty. Four tackles gone. Brad Dwyer waits once more. Comes into centre field, finds Ratchford. Kevin Penny wants it kicked to the corner. It's here with Matty Russell. They can't get Russell down tonight. They cannot get him down. In the end, two do. Dwyer, the dummy half, once again. Here is Sandow. Penny wants it again wide. Oh, off the head of his own man. And tidied up. Well, you want your big marquee plays, your big signings to come up with... The answer's near the try line, and that was certainly not the pass that you're looking for. There's a high shot here as well. Touch judge has seen it. Yeah, there's a high shot. The ball from Sandow comes off Curry's head. And then as they bring in the ball away, there is a high shot. The referee comes, oh, sorry, the touch judge comes straight onto the pitch. And again, Eddie, what's it doing? It's just relieving all that pressure. Ryan Atkins on his opposite, Junior South. Well, if Warrington want to get back into this game, if Warrington think they can win the game they've got to be more disciplined there's Carney that's what I was on about before a push in the face push in the chin an open hand that saved him probably Tommy Lee and he pushed Brad Dwyer on his back then Carney trying to keep warm if ever a sponsor was more applicable than that yellow shirt You'd have to question as well, though, where was the defensive attitude that we're seeing there in the second half, in the first 40 minutes, when we saw 40 points? There's some real meaning in this defence, they're hitting and hurting, and it's certainly making it far harder to come up with points. George Griffin, hangs on, goes down in the tackle. Here's the last, Dobson then with the kick, teasing little kick, picked up nicely though by Tom Lynham. Everything seems weighted from Salford under no real pressure. Well, that's silly from Robert Louis. Yeah. Well, you know that if you're a player and you get caught behind the, the player of the ball, Eddie, you'll do everything because you're not set at market. You know that the winger lands on his front. It's a, it's a big, strong carry from Tom Lynham. And Robert Louis trying to help his teammates get back, get set. But because he lost collision, that's why he held on to his leg. And on this night of all nights, with uh, Robert Hicks really keen and blowing the whistle for penalties, We've had 18 of them already. And to be fair, they've all been penalties, haven't they? Sims gets the ball away as he falls to Ratchford. Reese Evans. Josh Griffin on his back. Michael Dobson in front of him. Gets set at marker. That was Jack Hughes at dummy half. That was Ratchford. This is Sandow. Here comes Westerman. Good tackling. Good tackling by Ben Murdoch Masilla. Matty Russell. Sandow, Ashton Sims, Sandow goes for the return, it doesn't come, that's four tackles gone, they're 15 metres away from the Salford line, with Brad Dwyer, Dwyer attacking them himself, thought about passing it wide to Kevin Penny, thought about it differently, and then concedes at the penalty. Well, he doesn't play the ball correctly. Ashton Sims on the previous play was looking around thinking, what do I do with this? They would just run it in. So then he runs the ball in. Then you've got you've got a couple of players on this left side for Warrington, thinking that the kick's going to come in from Brad Dwyer. But he tucks it under his arm and he, he goes to attack. And then all of a sudden, he doesn't regain his feet, tries to play the ball quickly, gives the penalty away. Well, tomorrow night we will be at the home of the champions against Huddersfield, the teams sitting at the moment bottom and next to bottom of the table still looking for the first wins of the campaign, it's on Sky Sports 2 from 7.30. Dobson and O'Brien, halted by Evans and Ratchford, Dobson dummy half again. It's impressive from Salford, the 18 point lead. In almost approaching the final quarter, tap penalty of their own after, still shifting the ball and sticking to what's helped them to be successful relatively this season. Cop they Jack. try and keep the ball alive again. Yes, he thought about the pass to Louis, just couldn't get his hands free. Dobson. And here comes Josh Jones again. Oh, great ball to Louis. And Louis oh. tries to get in between a couple, does so, then drops the ball. 
Well, everyone's an option in a red shirt. You can see them all pushing up. The lovely footwork from Jones. The brilliant offload as well. And Robert Louis has a little look around over his shoulder. And he thinks nobody's with me in the tackle. Coming over the top from Matty Russell. Well, it's a good break from, from Salford in the middle. But I can't tell you how difficult the skill was there to have the ball in your right hand. Offload it to Robert Louis on the right. And everybody's a genuine option. You've said it already, Tez. The Salford players getting themselves in space, in a position to receive the ball. And in team in rain, their skills look up to the mark. Let's get down to Angela Powers. News of Gary Wheeler, I believe. Yes, Gary's injury nightmare continues. He's out for most of the start of last season with a calf injury, then knee ligament. And it looks like this is definitely Achilles. He definitely won't play any more part in this game. He might not play for a long time after this. Awful news for Gary Wheeler. You do feel for the lad, you really do. St. Helens, his uh, career there was dogged by injury. Same at Warrington. So, so sad. Yeah, Penalty, meanwhile, to the Wolves. He's a brilliant talent, and yet again, you'll see another another penalty here going in Salford's favour. Well, Salford, I believe, or sorry, Warrington, I believe, need to score in the next couple of sets of six just to put that doubt in Salford's mind because at present, Salford are the team that just seem to be building and building in confidence. Ryan Atkins plays the ball quickly to Dwyer. Westerman halted by solid tackling from uh, George Griffin. Dwyer again, 11 metres out. Down this left-hand side with Sandow. Sandow to Ryan Atkins. Atkins will score for Warrington. Still 21 and a half minutes remaining, or 20 and a half minutes remaining, rather. And maybe, just maybe, Warrington find a way and are finding a way back into this match. It is 100th try in the Super League for the Wolves. Eddie, well, that's the lifeline, I believe, that Warrington are after. The mistake from Salford, giving away that penalty. The nice little ball again from Sandow. When he goes at the line, he's similar to Robert Louis. Whether you don't know whether he's going to run, he's got the ball in two hands. Robert Louis having a little look at Sandow, which just gives that split second, and that split second creates that space for that man, Ryan Atkins, and he's not to be denied that close to the line. Well, the scrum half you're talking about, the second favourite here is going to try and attempt this conversion. He's second favourite at the moment to win the Man of Steel at the end of the season, although he's not looked at perhaps in this game, Eddie. Because well, two more points certainly help the chance and the hopes of the Wolves side. But Absolutely, not... that's a tremendous conversion from, uh, from Chris Sandow. And, uh, well, there's a night out for the league players and Ryan Briley there in the centre of your screen. And... Uh, Paul Rowley, the former Lee coach, is there with all his former club colleagues. There they are on a big night out. Well, he's even brought his dad as well, Paul, to the left of the screen with the glasses yes, on, yes, Alan Rowley. Who has today announced his retirement as CEO at uh, the Lee Centurions. But the, the big news that we understand from the Lee Centurions is that Ryan Briley has actually given the Centurions a four weeks notice period. That's, that's the rumour that we understand is, uh, is absolutely concrete. He's handed a four-week notice in, just like any other employer. He must have some sort of... Clause in his contract. Clause, maybe, for a four-week notice period. But anyway, he's testing it to the limit. So where will Ryan Briley be playing in a month's time? Well, it certainly lights up Super League. One of the standouts for Lee Centurions, isn't it? Penny going backwards, but gets away from Copjack. Now straightens it up. Eddie, but did you look at that last clip then? Kevin Penny's running across the line. He's he's looking to give one of the ball or the ball to his teammates. Nobody is hitting a hole. No one's that one, that option. Oh, well, Westerman has hit a hole. They're starting to drop off the tackle, Salford, somewhat alarmingly. And here is Ratchford. Dabs it in towards the corner. Oh, oh, oh. That's it, eh? Wow. To deliberate knock-on. It's a harsh call if it is. <laughs> Well, it wasn't actually a knock-on because he knocked into the touch, so he was out of touch before it could be a knock-on. He's disorientated, he's all over the place, Greg Johnson. And the rain is really coming down, that's a nasty bounce, and Tom Lynham is breathing down his necks. What a brilliant set, though. They've scored six points, they've got the supporters a little bit excited. They've gone the length of the field and they're going to get another six tackles. This is a great opportunity now for Wolves. It is. They're only 10 metres out of this scrum set. There's at least one more in the, in the scrum. They find him in the end. 
Ratchford then from the base of the scrum to Sandow. Westerman again. Goes down again, 10 metres away from the line. Bernard uh, Brad Dwyer. Brad Dwyer to, uh, gets in the field to Ashton Sims. And he goes down under George Griffin's tackle. We're going to have to try and keep the line intact here. Salford, or the alarm bells will be ringing. Good work from Robert Louis, but he's not tackled, isn't Matty Russell? Or is he tackled, Matty Russell? I think the referee said he was. Yeah, Eddie, a lot of the attack from Warrington is going down there, Robert Louis. Sandow into centre field to Ratchford. Ratchford goes to the line, hangs on. That's four tackles gone, two remaining. Sandow, short ball. And good work from Jack Hughes. Kevin Penny now on the last. Back he comes to Sandow, stabs the kick to this in goal area. There's still just less than 17 minutes remaining. Atkins gets his second try. Warrington on the way back. Well, there's a lot of nerves if you're a Salford player. Stefan Ratchford again. Just dropping the ball onto his boot. Clever player Tom Lyon and putting pressure on Greg Johnson. And again, everybody is an option. And Ryan Atkins, well, he started his second half well. He's continuing. Scored a couple of tries and it's game on now, Eddie. This is it. This is what we're after. If Salford are that good of a side, which we've been talking about them for the last few weeks, that they've really turned the corner. They've got to do it in this game now. It's really difficult to gauge enthusiasm, but the enthusiasm from the Warrington players, when that ball gets put on the toe of Chris Sandow, there's five or six players all hunting the ball, all hunting the try, trying to get the Wolves a foothold in this game. The momentum is with the Primrose and Blue. It is, and uh, Sandow took a very quick conversion. As you saw, he was successful with it, so... Three converted tries, it's now one converted tries. And I wonder what will be spoken about at half-time when Michael Dobson joins John Wells at the touchscreen. There he is, and he will be talking with John. And uh, we asked the question in the first half, would it be a Salford win? At half-time it looked like it. Would it be a Warrington win? Right now it looks like it might be, or could it be a draw? All options are on the table. Eddie, and could we go back to that incident with Murdoch Masilla against Ben Curry? Is Ben Curry unsettled Salford? Here he is. Look at the chase from Ben Curry. And Curry forces the ball over the line. He's lost it. Has he lost the ball of Warrington score? This could be a try. I, I think he's lost it, Eddie. I think oh, he's he's not, he tries to keep it. It's outstanding work from Ben Curry, no matter what's happened. The energy referee and is, the referee is asking somebody to have a look at this. I think it ends up grounded in goal. I think uh, we'll end up with a dropout here. We'll see what the video shows us. It's certainly uh, tackled and pushed back. I don't think the ball goes in goal. Should I think he tries to keep him in the field of play because Ben Cut is chasing that hard. He knows he's there. He's got to get that onto the ground. Sorry, is that not a penalty? Is it not hit his head? Sure. Well, it's certainly a high tackle there. If the uh, video referee decides to look at that. But I think uh, he's, he's, he's actually kept possession in the field of play, so it'll be a play of the ball in, in, in the field of play. Which is exactly what it is. And look at Warrington here now, charging in at the tackle. Carney felt the first one. And that's the reward for chasing hard. You, you don't stand back and admire the kick. Ben Cuddy's done that. And I talked about Ashton Sims taking a brave carry before. Well, this set of six for Salford. This could define their game. Salford would give their eye teeth for a penalty here. Oh, it's a knock on. Warrington will give their eye teeth for a knock on and possession from this scrum. And that's it. Warrington now starting to get excited about defence. The kick was there, the chase was there from Curry. The next set of six, they know that they've got to do the hard work. The talking, the communications there, and Ian Watson now knows that they're under pressure. They are under pressure because Warrington are going to get the possession from this scrum inside the 30-metre mark. 
it seems to me that Warrington have identified Robert Louis, the number six, red number six, as the man who they're going to try and run at more often, targeting defence here, break through his tackles. He's the maybe, in the Warrington minds, the weakest link of the line they've got to get through. This is Reese Evans then on the first tackle from that scrum. He goes down in the first tackle. Dwyer is directing operations at dummy half. Chris Hill, the Warrington skipper, takes it forward. gives that field position and the game has been all about field position and penalties the late footwork at the line you get outside of your man the little offload and you want your teammate pushing up who's the option who's pushing with me he skips outside of one he gets to Dobson Dobson comes in creates the space on the edge and well done Ashton Sim for following up your teammate I love what it means to the Warrington players such what it means to the Warrington public such a consistent player Chris Hill plays virtually every minute of every game does the hard yards he was involved in the tackle on Josh Griffin puts his hand up to cart the ball up and a wonderful offload to create a try and this kick from Sandow to level things up and the scores are level it's 30 points apiece we've had three Warrington tries in the last six minutes well again look at the late footwork you get outside here man it's Josh Jones, sorry, it's not one. He gets to Michael Dobson, who comes in for the big man. And Ashton Sim, you take your eyes off him, and that claw, so close to the line, there wasn't going to be any stopping him. Well, well this you... comeback wasn't there a quarter of an hour ago. It's amazing, isn't it? And again, do you go back to that incident where Ben Curry's just getting under the, the skin of one of Salford's better players? Well, they're going to fly down the middle, aren't they? Russell's picked it up and scooted along the centre of the field. Just going to get to the end here. That's going to be a brilliant kick. And they'll put all the pressure on the Reds now. Yes, it's time for Salford to stand up and be counted in defence. That is for sure. They've surrendered an 18-point lead. Here goes Chris Hill again. Right down the middle. Legs pumping. Look at him. It's a good carry, that. Another strong carry. What a set of six from the kickoff here. Send out with another kick to the corner. It gets away from Gareth O'Brien and does it there. Well, he collects from Gareth O'Brien. He has to be patient. And Tom Lyme collides with him. He's got to be committed in his chase, Tom Lyme. He can't stop dead on the spot. But unfortunately, the Salford fullback oh. catches one. It's just down to the conditions, isn't it? He's, uh, he's slid into a 20 metre restart. Justin Carney takes it forward on the first tackle, this latest set of six. We're having confirmation from the dressing room, it's a snapped Achilles for poor old Gary Wheeler. Tommy Lee is the dummy half for Salford. There is Robert Louis, now it's with Dobson. Here goes O'Brien, on the worst for that clatter that he received as he made that ball dead. Josh Griffin takes it forward still further, wants to play the ball quickly, finds O'Brien. Here goes Wong. Wong gets it away to Mark Flanagan. He is immediately hit by Chris Hill. Flanagan to his feet. Plays it again to Lee. Dobson. Dobson. Little dab into open spaces behind Matty Russell. And Russell's now got things to do. And he does it really well. Well, the kicking game from both sides there are playing important factor. Tom Lyon, well he goes blindside, which closes down the options. Maybe better served if he comes into the centre of the pitch. Because Salford and Warrington, both of these sides, got the bit between the teeth. Don't know who you boys are going to pick as your man of the match, but the two full-backs tonight, Russell at one end just played the ball there, and Gareth O'Brien at the other end have been magnificent, two of them. Well, I think Chris Hill's had an outstanding game. He's worked incredibly hard, but those full-backs have had a heck of a lot of work to do, and who knows, the last ten minutes we're coming into the... The business end of the game, the man of the match might make himself known. Now then, Sandow's gone for a 40-20. Carney has cut it out, slipped through his arms and went backwards off his knees to play on. 
Carney carrying it forward towards Hill, who has again done great work, gets slapped on the back. Oh, yeah, Daddy, that's well dealt with that. You kick the ball behind Carney, you take him out of the further players. Johnson now trying to, to go forward, the Salford pack just getting back behind the ball now. Josh Jones is spun to the ground by Stefan Ratchford. It's done well Ratchford to do the full 80. And he's been defending in the middle of the park like a hooker as well. Not used to doing so many tackles, Eddie. The Reds seem to be sticking to the plan that they began the game, even though we're 30 all with 10 minutes to go. They struggled to go forward though in those last three players, and they're reliant here on a very long kick. Robert Lewis hits it towards the middle of the pitch. This will skip away, and it goes behind Russell again. Collects it next to his post, but the chase this time is a little laboured. Russell brings it back gamely, halted by Lee. Eddie, it's what comes next now because you, your first tackle, Matty Russell, he's landed on his front. The next tackle, well, they've dealt with Kevin Penny. But they can't give up those e easy metres. Once you've made contact, you've got to work extra hard to take the man to ground. Gareth O'Brien standing fully 20, 25, maybe 30 metres behind the play here, the Salford fullback. As he watches Westerman get the ball away to Brad Dwyer, who ducks underneath the challenge of Murdoch Masilla. Josh Griffin gets to him eventually. That's tackle number four. They're still inside their own half, Warrington. Will they kick early? Jack Hughes goes down on the last, just over the halfway line. Look for Sandow here with the kick. It's with Sandow, and he goes high and down the middle. That's into the arms of O'Brien. Boom, in force, and again it's Hill who's leading the charge. Well, every senior player now for Warrington just seems to have put, be putting their hand up, trying to lead by example, let some of the more inexperienced players just follow suit. Louis gets the ball into the centre of the field to Murdoch Masilla. He was looking for the penalty then because he believed that was a high shot. They're going to swing it wide here, they're going to have a go at them. With Louis and Dobson. Josh Jones, no way forward, four gone for them, still the wrong side of the halfway line as far as they're concerned. Mark Flanagan, oh he gets the ball away, it's still alive, it's still alive, and Dobson. Well Warrington recover and they bring him down, this is the last for Salford. Louis, he'll hoist it high, but it's too long for everybody, this is Matty Russell's. Well, it's like a game of chess now, isn't it? Good chase from Junior Sal. Yeah, game of chess, kicking it deep, looking for that mistake. Could it come down to that one-pointer, Eddie? Well, I was just going to say, where's, where's Steve-O to be calling for the one-pointer? <laughs> He's on his way for his operation on Saturday. He's watching tonight at home by the uh, the fireside, no doubt. Feet up, slippers and pipe. <laughs> and seven minutes to go to the end of the match. Oh, here goes Rhys Evans. Well, in these conditions, Eddie, I don't think we can really stress how good the handling has been in the last 10 minutes in particular. Under the pressure and with the rain falling, it's almost sleet-like conditions. The quality we've seen with the uh, kicking accuracy, the passing has been brilliant. We're going to see a fantastic finale here now in the next six, six and a half minutes. And they have never, ever drawn a match in Super League, these two before. So perhaps we're watching a little bit of history in... 43 previous meetings at this level. But is there a little twist in the tail yet? And will Justin Carney provide it? He gets away from Kevin Penny! And it's six to go, six to go. I think it was Atkins who got a fingertip to it. This is Louis into centre field. Murdoch Masilla again. Well, both of these teams seem to be just hanging on, don't they? Well, you can see the mistake. Chris Hill coming out the line, trying to cut down Kotchak. You don't want to give up that field position easily that you've worked so hard to get. Dobson drops the pass off. It's George Griffin taking on Jack Hughes and Stefan Ratchford. You'd have to think at the end of this set they'd be close enough for an attempt at the, a drop goal. If that's the ploy they want to go for, Flanagan's now, what, 30, 32 metres from the goal post. Well, the... Coming up to the fifth tackle here, they'll take it forward another drive. Now then, That's Dobson. Dobson has dropped back. Dobson has dropped back. He's going to go for it. I think he is. Dobson oh, it goes underneath the post. Great then, chase. Was that Curry again? Was it doing the chasing? Didn't Craig Kopchak do a good job as well Dwyer. to land on his front? Dwyer. Brad Dwyer. 
Dwyer with the chase, look at that. That's an extra effort, that is. Well, I think we've seen a better attitude to the other side of rugby league. I think we saw plenty of tries, a little bit sloppy in defence, but both teams have come out with a renewed vigour, a great aptitude for the, for the job of defending. And that's what Salford are doing here, in the shape of Josh Griffin, just pushing Ashton Sims back a bit. George King takes it forward. Westerman gets them to halfway. That's four tackles gone. Now, can Warrington just make 20 metres further forward and then maybe they'll have a crack? Well, this fellow's been a jack in the box all night. They get to within nine, just nine metres inside the Salford half. Sandow, he surely won't try a drop goal from there. No, he won't. He's running it. And he dabs it into open space over the top. Watched again by, uh, by um, Evels. Uh, Evels, who's out there. Eddie Sandow was going for that. Sandow was going to go for that, but it was the pressure from Salford that made him feel a touch uncomfortable, so he couldn't get that kick away. He just has come on as my level. Oh, penalty! Penalty to Salford. Evels just on the field for O'Brien. Eddie, and that's all it takes. That Again, you run hard, you get rewarded, you look to land on your front, the hands in. And now all of a sudden, Warrington and the team that are under pressure, it's, it's drop goal territory now. It is now, it is now, because what have we got? Less than four minutes to go, and surely Salford will take it forward. The doctor, well, he's got the rain all over his glasses, but he's watching intently here. And they're inching ever closer to those posts. Another drive at the middle from Kopchak. Is this the moment for Dobson now? He's dropped back, he's in on his own. And it's fired back to Dobson. Oh, he, they got out and stopped him. Great defence from Warrington. Yeah, it was, Eddie, and it's that man again, Chris Hill, leading from the front. Captain's not from him. Robert Louis going to... Oh, it was. It was an effort. And that's a chance gone begging. I think it was a bit of a worm burn on that one from Robert Louis. Missed an opportunity. Maybe that this wasn't the player. You could see again the effort from Warrington in defence to just get in his eye line to put him off <laughs> he's not happy he's not happy with the end result I don't think Robert Louis will be either the last season they couldn't get within 10 points of Warrington home or away they've done very well here they've proved they are a competitive outfit in 2016 now is it Warrington's turn is it Warrington's turn to force a goal uh, rather a drop goal attempt it's with Sandow again it's going to be a long one, Eddie, if he does. Yeah, well, Dodds goes down, they're 40 metres out. Giving it to Sandow, he's gone for it, he's charged down, and Salford had it back with Dobson. Oh, it's a penalty. Oh, Eddie, penalty. He's offside. He got for Dobson two. was offside to the play the ball. No, he was offside after the uh, the charge down. He was still behind front. him. It come off a Salford player and it goes forward, and then the man in front picks the ball up. So here's the... The drop goal attempt, it comes off oh, the man right. who's yeah, the yeah. marker. Yeah, yeah. You don't trust me on rules, do you, Eddie? There it goes, and Dobson's in front, comes off him, makes a play for it. Yeah, penalty. I'm gonna go for goal here, Warrington. And they are going for goal with Chris Sandow, is it? It would be a shame for the Red Devils. They've been in this contest, I think we've all been impressed with the early season form and composure that they've shown. They've allowed Warrington off the back of some solid work and I'm, I don't apologise for mentioning Chris Hill over and over again. He does a lot of the untidy stuff. The things that only his teammates will thank him for. He's 42 tackles and only one miss. That's more than anybody else on the pitch as well as doing his work in attack. Well, this is a big kick. And remember, it was Warrington who were the last team to win on this ground. Ian Watson's men are defending an unbeaten home record. This kick from Sandow could win it. 42 metres out. Sandow! He had the direction, he didn't have the legs. Oh, well he was on form as well with five from five. Tony Smith and Ian Watson on the sideline just holding the breath. With less than a minute to go, you think, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. no! Just goes underneath. Will the draw, fair reflection of the game, Eddie? Or could it still be a one-point win to Warrington? Well, it'll have to be quick. 
because there's only 25 seconds remaining. Well, the Thursdays are becoming the big nights of the Super League, aren't they? We saw a belter at the KC Stadium last week against Castleford, between uh, Holt FC and Castleford. Here tonight, this is equally as good, and it's taken us right to the final kick of the game, and this could be it from Sandow. He's given himself space, he's having a go, it's Sandow! Oh. and sofa they must feel like Fagan has moved in and picked their pockets Eddie that is heartbreaking that and let's give some credit as well to Matty Russell he's been the secret weapon for Warrington his kick returns he's getting in from dummy half his urgency to get out here and, and just play this ball quickly stand out he was under pressure and to slot that away it means so much with the hoots are gone that is a class class play Keep you calm in all situations, and the execution of that, well, fabulous. And look at those Warrington fans celebrate. 19th drop goal of his career, his first for the Warrington Wolves, and two valuable points on the league ladder that take Warrington top, above Witness, who play tomorrow, and, of course, maintain their 100% start to this season. A fabulous game. I can see why the bookmakers think that Chris Sando has got a great chance of finishing the year as the Man of Steel winner, the best individual player. That is a fantastic play in the last second of the match under immense pressure. He did remarkably well. The Sulphur fans, well, sport has no sympathy. It's a cruel thing. Not always the best team that win, but the one with the most points at the end. And tonight it's Warrington and their supporters. What a significant night this could be. What a significant night indeed. 30 points to 12 down in the 49th minute. In fact, with an hour 